All right, for our final task number four, we're going to look at the certificate of BGP cost community. And we're going to start with using the cost community. We need to configure our two and make sure the R1 prefer itself to each switch one loop back 10 through 12. Okay, so let's see what we have right now on R1. So in R1, we do show IP, BGP, VPN, V4, all going towards the switch one loop back interfaces. You can see that it's currently preferring although it's receiving a equal cost routes from both off 2 and R4 it's actually preferring R4 for that so what we're going to have to do is using the cost community so let me kind of delete all that so currently R1 is receiving route this way and this way and it's preferring R4 so somehow we're going to have to lower the cost community for the route that's coming in from R2 so that way R1 would prefer R2 to get to switch one. Okay, so without manually modifying the cost community itself, since the cost community is derived from the EIGRP metrics, what we can do is to adjust the EIGRP metrics itself and when it gets copied into BGP metric attributes, it will cause R1 to prefer that particular route. So the way to adjust the EIGRP metrics, you can either lower the delay on the interface fast zero one where the route is being received from switch one on R2 and or you can increase the bandwidth. Okay, and because increasing the bandwidth will essentially lower the edge of tricks. And that's what we're going to do. So what we're going to do is increasing the bandwidth on the interface R2 fast 0, 1. So let's get into the router R2. Before we do anything, let's do a show IP EHRP VRF C1 topology for 10, 10, 0, 0, for example. Let's see currently a minimum bandwidth is 100 meg. And here's our current metric for the routes. So now if we go under the fast 0, 1. Okay, you guys just to make sure that you modify the, the bandwidth configuration on the correct interface, not so much of the switch one, file, uh, switch one side of the sender because the route is being evaluated on the metrics as it's received on the router, so it has to be done on the receiving end of the interface. Otherwise, the change would not take effect. So on the R2, we're going to increase the bandwidth, say, to 150 meg instead of a default 100 meg. And this is just the bandwidth value on the interface, not so much of the actual bandwidth. So do that, and then let's take a, another show command on that. Give it a second. So it looks like it just took the change. And you can see here our minimum bandwidth went up from a 100 meg to roughly 150 meg. And that's also results in the actual composite metrics of the route itself going down. Okay, so before we had a 156160, now it has become 147456. Which means now if we jump back to our router R1, just do an up arrow, just do a show BGP routes again. You can see that now R1 is actually prefer R2 for the routes to switch one. You can see the new metrics gets reflected in the BGP table as well. And just to make sure on our router R6, you can do a trace route to 10, 10, 0, 1, sourcing from loop back 10. You can see it went from 1 to 3 to 5 and then to 2. And then to 10. Okay, so what that tells you is the routes actually use the cost community attribute as far as the metrics and compare those, and the one that has the lower metrics will be preferred by the router. Okay, the next section of our task here is asking us to use a local preference, and now we have to configure R4 to make R1 prefer itself to reach switch one lead back 10 through 12. So currently R1 is preferring R2. Since we made the adjustment to the cost community to get to switch one, now using the local preference, we want to configure R4 to force R1 uh, traffic to switch one to actually come through it this way. Okay, seems pretty straightforward since we're dealing with IBGP, and usually with IBGP, the route with a higher local preference will be preferred over the one with the lower local preference. But the problem that we're having right now is if you look at R4, show IP, BGP, VPN, V4, all. You see, even R4 is actually preferring R2 to get to switch one loopbacks. And that's because when the R4 learned routes from switch one, okay, it, it also learns this exact same route coming from R2, although one side is EIGRP routes and the other side is BGP route. This is an exception when you run EIGRP as a PECE routing protocol is that the routes coming from EIGRP and BGP actually gets compared. And while the routes coming from the EIGRP, which has the AD of 90, should be preferred over the routes from IBGP, which has AD of 200, the BGP route is actually being preferred. So R4 right now is sending traffic to R2 this way, as it's preferring the route in that direction. R4 would not 
advertise the switch one loopback interfaces out to R1. Okay, so what, the first thing that we need to do is to stop R4 from learning switch one routes from R2, and that way it will start using the route coming directly from switch one and then advertise it to both R1 and R2. So we need to come up with that route filter for route coming from R2 to R4, but we know that any routes from the previous task is being originated from site three it will be tagged by a SOO value of three three because we have that configured on fast zero one on R2. Just to refresh your memory. Okay, we, we have it right here with the route map of SOO. We're tagging it with three three. So what we can configure in R4 is to pretty much block all the routes as being tagged with the SOO value of three three. Okay, and that way R4 will always prefer route coming directly from switch one. And just to show you show you that the perspective of R4 and seeing those routes, we can do a IP community list since we're going to have to match a SOO of 3.3. So we have to come up with the IP community list 10, just like any other access list. We need to do a permit to match. And here we can specify, oh, we have to make sure it's a extended community. So not just a regular community. So IP extended community list 10 permit. And here we have an option for matching a site of origin. And we say we're looking for a SO of 3.3. And if you do show IP BGP, VPN V4 all, and then we can filter based on the extended community list, attach that with the, or refer it back to the community, extended community list of a 10. You can see that these are the, currently the route that's being tagged with the SOO of 3.3 that we want R4 to block. And that's also include switch one loopback interfaces. Okay, so now we can construct a route map. We're gonna call it from R2. And we're gonna deny sequence five. We're gonna match is our extended community based on the community list of 10. And then don't forget to allow everything else. So it would be permit 10. Okay, now we go to router BGP 100. And then under the address family VPN v4, we have to apply the filter towards R2. So we want to say to 16.0.2 with the route map from R2. And although we are currently using a peer template, for our BGP configuration, we can kind of override that per neighbor. It's right here. So we now have we have applied the route map to all the routes being learned from R2. Then we have to make sure that it takes effect by clearing the, the refreshing the route, the BGP with the direction inbound. And now if you do show IP, BGP, VPN, V4 all one more time, hopefully that should have been filtered and it has. You can see that now R4 is actually preferring switch one for all those routes. Okay, as opposed to before, you scroll up, it was preferring R2. Okay, so at this point, if we go back to R1, R1 before only see routes coming in from R2. If we do up arrow, you can see now we see an additional routes for each of those loopbacks coming in from R4. Right now that we are seeing R1 learning routes from R4, we can apply the local preference to force R1 to prefer R4. So on the R4 site, we can do route map to R1, permit 10, and then we can just match by the same extended community list. So that would be all the routes that's being originated from site 3, 10, and then we can set local pref to anything that's higher than 100, which is default. We're going to pick 200, and then don't forget to allow everything else. Permit 20. Okay, and then we get under router BGP 100, address family, VPN v4, and then apply the outbound route map towards R1. Again, overriding our peer template to R1 out. And then don't forget to clear IP BGP out. All right, give it a second. Going back to R1, to our up arrow, you can see that all the routes is coming in from R4 has a local preference value of 200 now. But even that, we have a higher local preference for those routes. The router R1 is still preferring R2 for those routes. Okay, and that's because by default, when you're dealing with 
Again, EIGRP has a PEC routing protocol. The router will prefer the lower cost community metrics even than the local preference value themselves. So you can see as long as the route has the local uh, lower metrics, as you can see here for the, this particular route, regardless of the local preference value, it's still going to prefer the routes with the lower cost community value. Okay, and the way to override that, so there's actually the way to override the default behavior, is to use a command under the router BGP100 called BGP best path cost community ignore. Okay, so you basically tell the router to ignore the cost community and then revert back to the traditional best path selection rule. In this case, we're using a local preference. Okay, so enter on that. And hopefully the router R1 will start preferring the route with the higher local preference. Let's do a show command one more time. You can see that it has already switched from R2 to R4 as a, the best next top. Okay, so now going back to R6, rerun the trace routes. You can see now it went from R1, R3, and then directly to R4, and then switch one. Okay, so just reiterate, when you deal with the EIGRP for CEP routing protocols, the cost community actually takes precedence over all of the BGP attributes that it's normally used as part of the past, or best path selections, unless you issue the cost community ignore command under the BGP routing process. Okay, so that completes our task number four with the BGP cost community. So now that we have completed all of our tasks, you can see that EIGRP, when it comes to MPLS PC routing, it behaves a little differently. With the route remains being a internal routes throughout the redistribution process, even the BGP also behaves differently as well as far as this prefers the cost community over any other BGP attributes. But as far as the from the customer perspective, they don't really have to worry about any of those because from the perspective, the MPLS cloud or VPN cloud itself is just one big router to them. And the MPLS itself doesn't actually add metrics into the routes itself. And same thing with the site of origin feature. Those are the features that needs to be configured on the provider side of the router and not so much of the customer side. Unless you deal with the backdoor link scenario, but even that you're going to have to coordinate with the provider to have the CIF origin set for you. Okay, so that wraps up our video on MPLS VPN PC with EIGRP. You can visit the website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labminutes.com, and I'll see you guys in the next video.